Hey guys, this is Steven from the Green Engineers. Uh, good morning. Today is May 10th, uh, Friday. I'm super tired because we just uh, hammered this guy out yesterday, last night. Stayed up till 4 o'clock in the morning to get this guy done, ready for senior project presentation. So this is the update. Uh, as you guys know, this is the Phil Factory. So uh, this is my second version of the multi shooter and also it's going to contribute a lot of code to the multi shooter itself. So let's go into a little bit of how it's uh, constructed, uh, how it works, and um, basically all the uh, quite a bit of details. So this guy will come back uh, after the project here. And it will be the test bench here at my place for um, the future uh, builds of it. So let's do 11 and a quarter minute video here. So uh, this guy is actually a test bench for the fill factory. So it's in a test bench style. So if you notice that this extruder is at the same angle that it would have been inside the box. I can't remember if I showed you guys any of the concept pictures of the box itself with uh, all the components in it. So uh, basically what I have is um, the, uh, the barrel up here uh, the hopper, so the hopper holds uh, one kilogram of pellets or flakes or whatever, preferably right now pellets. I don't know if flakes will work necessarily on this because the flakes won't roll down, but the pellets will roll down and in through the hole. And there's a hole here inside. And inside I didn't have a chance to uh, because um, the uh, the shop dot bill was starting to uh, default. Um, I'll have to talk about that later, but uh, I, w I was supposed to have access to the fourth axis, and I started to lose access to that, so I wasn't able to do the screw inside uh, the fourth axis screw. So now uh, this just has the regular wood auger that's in my multi-shooter build, and uh, so normally this would be driven here with a belt. So uh, yesterday we weren't able to fire it up because there was a lot of things that were missing um, because I wasn't able to machine spacers to space this thing off um, a lot of things were uh, a problem because I was supposed to have a little shaft spacer a little aluminum spacer that spaces those bolts off so that it fits and also the it was supposed to fit flush um, it's supposed to be countersunk and supposed to fit flush so there was a lot of machining that was missing that would ca that caused this guy not to be able to fire up so uh, I do uh, want to finish it and uh, eventually at some point do fire it up. Chances are it's going to clog because that first guy, which was the very first prototype, I think that clogged like once or twice until I was able to change. So it clogged once, I changed some stuff, clogged again, and I changed some stuff, and then it didn't clog. And then that was the design I went with. So uh, I didn't really uh, predict it running the first time anyways. So, uh, of course, we ran out of time on Senior Project because of this other class that I was taking was way harder than it was supposed to be. So, um, that took a lot more time uh, out of my semester and also working at Applied and uh, working on uh, um, the Green Engineer stuff as well. So, um, here we have the, the spool. So, basically what it is is it's kind of like a spindle. So, um, if you see there, there's this intermediate spot here and then outside so outside this is just a regular spool and I have a ring and it has a uh, tapered bearing in there so there's an adapter ring and then there is a taper bearing race pushed into it and then there's this uh, spindle piece this intermediate plastic piece here and that has a shaft on it and then it has the um, it has the what's it called the the bearing the, the 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 taper bearing pressed onto it and so that guy is attached here uh, the spool is loaded on with a nut and a um, compression washer and then that's spun on and it presses plastic piece into the spool to get friction on the spool and to spin the spool and then this is just a regular NEMA 17 in a final in the final version, it will have uh, some sort of, it'll have a 60 tooth um, gear reduction here and then have a 16 tooth on the NEMA and it'll drive this with the 60 tooth. So this was just for uh, 
to get it to work. So as you see, it's on the, this PLA uh, printed uh, uh, stand here. Then we have the winder you're familiar with. This is the uh, the fill fat, the multi shooter winder. Um, has just the regular eight turn servo, which I need to change to a four turn. And it has the chromed rails, the uh, pulley, uh, the uh, the belts, um, and then we put a little loop onto the gantry to move the filament back and forth. And then here is just a, a little. Uh, uh, spool, so it's got a 608ZZ, I mean pulley, it's got a 608ZZ ball bearing pressed on the inside, which is over here on the back. You can see there, it's pressed in on the inside. And then it just has a bolt there that's really, really close to being tight, so it'll basically free spin. Then we have the dimensional control. Um, this is a not so great working, this is a not a working version of the multi shooter, I mean, the, not multi shooter, the, um, the dimensional control. But this is kind of what it looks like. I just need to improve the tolerances a little bit. Uh, my other printer has a, my main printer has a jam, so I wasn't able to fix the jam uh, because we were so busy assembling last night, so I couldn't put one together. Then, e even if we did, this guy's not gonna fire up, so um, it does get hot enough to melt with 280 watt, with 240 watt um, heater cartridges. So that is a good sign. It does get hot enough to melt I'll probably need to add a third heater cartridge because it's not, even when you wait a really long time, it's not enough to just kind of do it like my old one where it just, it just went right in. But uh, maybe if it was the actual fill factory and it had an enclosure around it, which this one does, but it didn't have it when we fired it up and uh, there's not a complete cover on it. But um, other than that, it, uh, it, it's, it was a pretty good prototype and also you see here that I had another big issue where we took this to a guy to weld it and he absolutely butchered welding that nozzle on so I had to go in there with a grinder and he, he like migged it with the aluminum attachment and it had like bubbles and stuff everywhere so I cleaned that up so now it's presentable sort of but as you can see he like butchered it with a grinder cut, so it cut a whole bunch of stuff into it so that also I wasn't happy about here's my new fan shroud so this is kind of like a new version of the multi shooter one I might even put this one on the multi shooter one so it just uses my regular 40 40 millimeter fan and it goes through this super sweet duct I designed and uh, it goes um, through this hole here goes through the hole in the top and it travels the filament travels inside that channel and the air will wrap around the filament. The air will wrap around the filament as it comes out. And that will support up to five millimeter filament. And again, this nozzle is five millimeters, so you could do up to five millimeters and down to 1.75. So if you have a big printer and you wanna do five, milli five millimeter filament, obviously you're probably gonna have to do less than five millimeters, because then otherwise this, this spool will barely be moving. So uh, five millimeters, so I'm gonna say probably four and a half, four millimeters or lower. So you could do everything for Ultimaker or even a regular printer. So as you guys know, what happens is it extrudes, goes through the fan, goes through the dimensional control, measures the diameter, kicks up through the pulley, and the winder winds it back and forth on the spool. So every time the spool does one rotation, the winder will move one diameter of the filament and it will wind it completely onto the spool until you have one kilogram. Um, basically what happens is the dimensional control, if it reads the diameter is big, the spooler will speed up. If it measures small, the spooler will speed down. And uh, that's really easy to do because it has a stepper motor. So that's just, dro that's just driven by a PID loop. And here uh, we have the NEMA 23 at the top and we have two little Chinese uh, stepper drivers. So there's one there and one there, uh, bolt, uh, that one down there, or this one right here, sorry, for the main NEMA gets extremely hot, but it could still drive it, so, good deal. Um, so basically what we did to test it, uh, if it was doing filament, is we have this twine, which is somewhere around here, I don't know what we did with it. It's laying over here on the floor, but we had some rope, and basically what we did is we put the rope inside the spool, and then we tied a knot, and then we had it go through the winder and then through the pulley. 
and then we basically just stood back here and held the twine and then the winder winded it up and the spool was spooling at about 90 rpm which is exaggerated but it was for the video for the presentation so winded it up on there and uh, comp and uh, wrapped onto the spool so we were able to do that in about 30 seconds uh, this entire length of, uh, of twine oh there's twine right there anyways so uh, we've got a 15 watt power supply regular Arduino Mega eventually it's going to have that uh, just a regular relay run the heaters or do a transistor probably a transistor a uh, quiet transistor to run the heaters and then there's the other uh, stepper driver so eventually I want to have it all on one PCB just use uh, some uh, just use a uh, 3d printer can uh, 3d printer electronics I just need to find the right motor that won't burn out those uh, those controls all right so that's basically it uh, you'll see quite a bit more of this guy as uh, time goes on but uh, I need to get together with my group and uh, finish up our presentation we present at one o'clock it is now nine it's about ten o'clock so um, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned. Uh, this has been Stephen from the Green Engineers. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy. Peace.